Hi, I'm Rick Kaler, and thanks for joining me today. Well, the principles of capitalism are everywhere. Just ask Stephen Levitt and Stephen Dubner, who are the authors of Freakonomics. Not long ago, I attended a talk where these two authors shared their, uh, call it eclectic, brand of economic research. One area they discussed was the structure of drug cartels and the uh, salaries that were paid to their members. A typical cartel employs about 5,000 people. At the top are the so-called board of directors who each typically make about 500,000 a year. Next are regional governors at about 350,000 a year and under them are local leaders with exclusive territories. They typically earn 20% of gross revenues, meaning that they net perhaps 75 to 100,000. And finally, last in the uh, uh, pecking order, uh, there are foot soldiers who are typically teenagers selling crack for around $5 an hour. Now, this structure really isn't all that different from other business organizations. The entry-level drug dealers are finding jobs in the uh, dominant local industry, much as young people in Rapid City might find jobs in our dominant local industry, which would be tourism. Of course, there's the fact that drug dealing is illegal. Also, the death rate of gang members is 7%, which is seven times the percentage of our soldiers killed in Iraq. So, why do this for $5 an hour, asked Levitt? Well, he says, they're simply willing to take a risk to improve their income and their lives. Now, in contrast to this, Levitt turned to a recent Rasmussen poll on capitalism, which found that only 53% of Americans believe capitalism is the best economic model. He said, if you don't like capitalism, you're going to need to find a different economic model. According, again, to Levitt, that alternative uh, isn't going to be communism or even socialism, which are models that have failed in Russia, China, and Eastern Europe. Uh, Milton Friedman has said that socialism is a disproven economic model. So neither capitalism or communism or uh, socialism or communism uh, have proven to really improve people's lives and produce wealth. Nevertheless, the current attitude of most Americans seems to be, well, let's give socialism a try. Shortly before his death in 2006, as I said, Friedman predicted that even though socialism is a discredited economic uh, model, that people would be seduced by its collectivist ideas once again in the future. So what do we see going on right now? Well, the U.S. Gov government has essentially nationalized Chrysler and General Motors. The president has just appointed a czar with broad authority to set and oversee pay levels for top executives at seven of the country's largest companies. During the presidential election, John McCain's campaign was criticized for saying much of the financial crisis was psychological. Levitt suggested McCain actually got it right. Uh, quoting Levitt again, bad economies can become self-perpetuating. It all depends on where a person is getting their data. End quote. For example, someone reading the New York Times last fall with its repeated references to if we would recover would have concluded, as many Fox News uh, commentators did, that the end was near. The Wall Street Journal and Business Week painted a completely different more pragmatic picture of the crash by discussing when would we would recover, not if we would recover. <clears throat> Levette uh, compared the current economic crisis to someone who gets sick. And his research shows that on the onsite of an illness, most people do nothing not going to the doctor until they're really sick. And typically, this is also the peak of the illness. So the patient is likely to improve regardless of what the doctor does. The doctor gets the credit, even though the patient was going to get better anyway. 
in singular fashion, he added, the American people are going to needlessly waste two to four trillion dollars to make themselves essentially feel better. This socialistic cure may get the credit for our economic recovery. Its only real impact, however, will be to create a burden of debt that will reduce Americans' standard of living for decades. Thanks for joining me.